Hey, this is Keith Dennis here to show you how easy it is to create a character in Toonlet. Toonlet.com is a website that lets you create your own comic strips. It's fun and ridiculously easy to use. So easy, in fact, that it doesn't really require a video tutorial on how to do it. But here's one anyways. When you just join Toonlet, this is the first thing you'll see. A randomly generated character made up of different body parts. You see, each Toonlet character is made up of these parts over here. Hair, eyes, nose, mouth, head, torso. You can also add arms, eyebrows, anything over here on this list. Up here, you can select different packs. You see, all these different pieces were created by artists, each with their own style. For example, Josh Kemble's pack has a lot of detail in the torsos and stuff. Heather Immig's pack has an anime look to it. Surly Ben's different packs, pirates, monsters, robots, speak for themselves. The Toonlet Beta Pack has some simpler designs. I'm personally a big fan of the Beta Pack, but there's good stuff in all of them. It just depends on your taste and what you're looking to do. I need to create a waitress for a strip idea that I have, so I'll poke through some of the different packs and look for a torso, which is a good place to begin. It's a toss-up between this one in Josh Kemble's pack and this one in Sarah Alexic's pack. I like that I can have her cross her arms. I don't think I need her to do that for this particular strip, but it might come in handy later. None of this dude's mug is working for me, so I'm going to get rid of it all and start the head from scratch. When you're looking at heads, no matter what pack you're in, you'll basically see a lot of different circular blobs. I only plan to see my waitress's chin, so I'll pick this one out of Heather Immig's pack. You can manipulate the body part you're working on with these controls up here. You can move it. With scale, you can make it bigger and smaller, and also skew it. Rotation lets you rotate it. Flip will flip it upside down. And spin really flips it along its vertical axis. You can click these buttons with your mouse, or you can use keyboard shortcuts. A or M for move. S for scale. D or R for rotation. F for flip. G for spin. There's a little keyboard shortcut cheat sheet down here. They quickly become second nature, making the whole body part manipulation process go pretty smoothly. The hair, for me, is going to be key. I want her to be young and pretty. The best way to sell this is the hair and the eyes. I like this hair here in Terry Nelson's pack, but I'm kind of feeling long hair, so I'm going to go back to Josh Kemble's pack and take this one. I'm going to put a hair snip behind her. Hair snip is the piece of hair that goes behind the head and the neck area to fill in back here. Which reminds me, you see this list of parts over here? It's in a specific order. Right arm, zazz, prop, left arm, and so on down the list to torso, then hair snip. This is the stack order of the body parts. The hair snip will always be in the back, and everything else will always sit on top of the torso. It makes sense when you start working with it, like you may want your hair to drape over your eyes, but you'd never want your eyes behind your head. Speaking of eyes, I love the Toonlet Beta Pack eyes. It really shows how expressive you can be with just a couple of dots and a line for the eyebrows. My two main characters, Marty and Mary Jane, use these. But since the waitress is going to appear infrequently, I feel like I want a little more detail in her eyes. I'll pick these out of Sarah Alexic's pack. Then I'll give her some simple Josh Kemble eyebrows, because I know I'm going to want to use some of these eyebrow variations on her other expressions. Since she's a waitress, I'd really like her to have one of those stereotypical diner waitress hat thingies. I can't really find what I'm looking for, but it's not a big deal because Josh Kemble's pack has a visor. In my original strip idea, the character worked at a convenience store, so in my head, she was wearing a visor, and it'll work here too. Which reminds me of something else. You don't have to only use a thing for what it was originally intended. I'm going to skip ahead to her being almost done and illustrate my point. I added a Josh Kemble nose and mouth, and now I need to put a name tag on a shirt. I don't expect a name tag to actually exist in props, but that's okay, because it'll be so small that I just need something that would look like it. And it actually ends up being a robot mustache.
So there's one other thing that I want to point out here. When you move the head, all the other things that belong on the head, the hair and eyes and that stuff, is going to move with the head. Now when you move the torso, everything is going to be on the torso. In this one instance, because I'm using a robot mustache for a name tag, moving the head is actually going to move my name tag. But it's really not a big deal and it's really very, very helpful to have all these things attached to the body parts that they belong to. So this is my character. I'll name her Waitress and I'll give her a mood of Alpha. She's kind of my base version of the Waitress. When I need a different expression for her, like in the next panel, I'll select her from the Choose Character window, then I'll hit Edit Character, and save it as a different mood. The other reason that I named her Alpha is because as I start creating more variations of her, they'll all be saved here, and they'll be listed alphabetically based on what I named her mood. I didn't think of that when I started creating my main character. As you can see, there's little rhyme or reason to how they're organized, and there are a lot of them. Anyhow, it's just an organizational tip. So my waitress is ready to be used in a strip now. Like I said, it's really easy and it's fun. Make yourself a character and join the Toonlet community. Toonlet, what's your story? I'm Keith Dennis, and I thank you for your time.